Welcome to the Danny Carlson Podcast, your resource for growing the business and mindset for a life of unrestricted freedom. Now here's your host, online marketing acrobat, Danny Carlson. What's up, guys? Danny Carlson here with the Danny Carlson Podcast, and this is going to be another episode about relationships. And honestly, when I started this podcast, I had no idea I'd be talking about relationships, but it's just kind of been happening. So I've gone through some really powerful stuff with relationships, especially ending relationships recently, that has just been so valuable for me that I had to share it with you guys. And since then, I've had so many ridiculously powerful, deep, moving conversations with other people that have been meeting here in Bali, other friends who are going through breakups themselves, um, and just other conscious people in Bali that are really working on their own insecurities and their own mental garbage, so to speak, that I just felt compelled to share even more when it came to that. So many of you may have heard what is actually now my most popular podcast episode about my relationship closing ritual. So just a basic overview, if you haven't heard it, I had a relationship closing ritual at the end of my last relationship with my girlfriend here in Bali. And we now have a really strong friendship, actually. We go out for lunch together and we play acro together. We do things that I don't do with any of my other ex-girlfriends because there would be some kind of resentments there or just it would feel weird, right? But there is none of that. We even, we're both dating other people and we have them all around and we're hanging out like I'm doing acro with my ex-girlfriend and then catching her in like a cradle position and that's just all fine and dandy and we all understand that it's totally platonic and we have a friendship around that. And I think that's really cool. And it hasn't even been that long since we were dating. It was like four months ago that we broke up. And I would honestly say that two months after that, I was completely mentally through the entire thing and free and clear and just felt really good about having a friendship with that person, which in the past it has taken me way longer than that. So this is what this episode is gonna be about. Uh, if you want more details about this, definitely check out the Relationship Closing Ritual episode. I think it was a couple episodes back, but this is now, kind of like four months down the line of how did it get to this point of going from having one of the most heart-wrenching breakups I've had in many years to honestly being really grateful for having that entire experience and having a really cool friendship with my ex-girlfriend. Um, So basically, I think the most important thing of this entire thing was how I process things mentally in the beginning. What I would do in the past is I would let my ego protect itself. So it's a very difficult thing when you break up with someone that you have to look at all the reasons why things happen, right? Things mentally going in your brain, you're like, oh, maybe I wasn't good enough with this. Maybe I should have done this. Or, you know, maybe I'm just a loser. Like all of these thoughts go through your head and the ego wants to protect itself. It doesn't want your brain to go there. It will stop you from thinking about that. You'll think about it a a few times and then your brain will be like, uh, come up with any random excuse to not think about it. Be like, ah, she was just a bitch. Or it's, you know, whatever, it, I'd be fine if she wasn't like a, a fucking cheat or like whatever the situation may be, right? So I think a lot of the prolonged pain from a breakup comes from not letting yourself go into that dark space and just facing things head on. The ego will always meddle with that and you have to push through the ego's response to protect itself and just sit in that space of mentally beating yourself up and letting your brain process through all of your own insecurities and shortcomings. And that's a freaking hard thing to do. That is a really freaking hard thing to do. Um, If you're not conscious of it, your brain will just keep pushing it away. And what happens if you keep pushing it away is that you will prolong the entire process. You push it away one day and then two nights later, um, it'll just come back up when you're thinking about this person again and then you'll feel shitty for a second, but then you push it away again. And then you keep pushing it away, it's just way longer that it's gonna come up. And you keep pushing it away long enough, it's gonna carry on into your next relationship. And that's why you see this recurring pattern of people who they move from one relationship straight into the next one, they're carrying all of their garbage over into the next relationship that's unresolved and the same patterns keep happening in relationship after relationship after relationship, right? Some of you maybe can relate to this, but if you literally just face it head on, you can 
not only avoid that problem, but you can resolve things in a surprisingly fast amount of time. In my, in my case, it was about two months from one of the most painful breakups I've ever had to totally free and clear and have a good relationship with my ex, right? So that's all fine and dandy, but practically, how did I do it? So in particular, there was, there was one particular night that I think, honestly, most of the processing happened. And this is honestly... You have to tread carefully with doing something like this. You have to be confident that you mentally can handle things. I would recommend probably you should have some experience with psychedelic experiences just so that you are on, you're confident that your brain can handle whatever comes up because this is not for the faint of heart. If you are like suicidal or something, definitely don't do this. Um, But it works really well for me. So basically, I had the intention of sitting with my insecurities and just sitting in that space of just mentally beating myself up, going through all the negative things and just processing all of that. I just didn't want to push it away. And there was one night in particular that I was just feeling particularly low. I just, I was crying full on. I was just letting it all out and just really felt as low as I could probably feel. And I just sat in that, sat in that for hours alone in my bedroom and it was getting late at night, but... I could feel that there was further to go. I needed to really go deeper and really sit with that. I, did, I don't know how else to explain it. I just felt really called that I just had to go deeper somehow. And the only way I know to go deeper is to use entheogenic substances. Um, and so I ingested an entheogen and stayed up all freaking night in the dark in my room and just literally sat with all of my insecurities and just in that really deep, dark space. And that was mentally incredibly, incredibly tough. It was a terrible, terrible night. And for those of you who are thinking taking any kind of substances is a way of escaping things, doesn't know anything about entheogens because it's literally the opposite. (laughs) It's literally the exact opposite. You cannot take it to escape something. It will bring up all of your inner garbage. It will bring up all of your insecurities, anything that you are pushing down, it will just make that all rise to the surface and force you to deal with it. Um, anyone who has had an ayahuasca journey or something like that knows what I'm talking about. Um, so literally just sat with it. It is probably the entire experience was probably about 12 hours by the time it was said and done and just staying up all night. And while that was incredibly tough and you should be in a mentally stable enough position to do something like this, just another caveat there, the processing that I went through there was probably like at least two months worth of processing or compared to my past self, six months worth of processing because I would just keep pushing stuff down and not dealing with it. So that was just a really powerful way to deal with things. And the next part of things, some people are probably going to disagree with me on, but, and I used to disagree with myself on this, but I've taken a different stance, is after I've gone through that processing stage, I've just um, kind of mentally beating myself up. I then have to go through the exact same thing, but for the other person. And I used to think that it was a good idea to just not let in any negativity, just take the high road, be positive and all this stuff. And, you know, don't think bad thoughts about the other person. But I think it's a very important part of moving on in the healing process, like really looking honestly, what are all the things you didn't like about the other person? What are all the ways you feel like the other person somehow wronged you or anything like that and just letting that really run wild because your ego again will protect yourself from going deep into that because you don't want to be seen yourself as a person who is you know a negative person or a really self-centered person or you're you're someone who doesn't talk bad about other people and so you feel guilty for feeling for thinking those thoughts and feeling those feelings but at the end of the day it is just a really important, essential part of the healing process or else otherwise what happens often is you can have a much rosier picture of the old relationship and then you're probably going to want to get back together with that person in the future or like every time you think of this person, you you only remember all of the good stuff, right? The brain, like once you're outside of something, you almost always remember things in a much rosier way. So like think of back when you're a kid, like every adult who is 40 plus, they think of, oh, the good old days, right? Like back when I was 19, like, oh, life was so good back then. Everything was super easy. And I was, I was the man, I was doing this. In reality, their life was, they probably weren't any happier. They're probably even less happy, but they just only remember the rosy parts of things. So 
it's really important to just let yourself go wild a little bit on why all the reasons why you and that person that you were dating are not actually a good fit to be dating. And almost in a way, demonize them a little bit and be okay with that and just sit with that. Now, an important thing to distinct here is I think that this is only for the purposes of going through the process. This is not to say that I think it's a good idea to really demonize the person and hold grudges against them and everything like that. In fact, the opposite, I think it's a necessary practice to get through that and so that you don't have any grudges or resentments toward the other person in the future. You can understand them for where they're actually at and you understand the reasons why you're not a good fit to be together in a relationship then you can take that how it is and then move on to whatever the next version of that relationship is. So like in my case with my ex-girlfriend, that is, I can look at that now as a friendship that I don't actually want to have a romantic relationship with this person again. And I know that we're not a good fit for that, but I would love to be friends and play acro yoga and have really deep, meaningful conversations. And that's great. Um, same with like a lot of guy friends that I have is, you know, there's a lot of things I don't like about certain people, but I can take that at face value and understand that and know that I'm probably never going to be really close friends with them and really fully open up to them. But they're really cool to uh, go ride motorcycles with, or they're really cool to, you know, to see every once in a while at my friend's villa. It doesn't mean I have to push them out of my life altogether. Right. So really it comes down to those two things was just like really facing the pain head on, not letting the ego push it away, dealing with it, fully diving into that and just being brutally honest with yourself and letting yourself process that and just realize that it's going to be a temporary position. You're going to feel really terrible for a short period of time instead of constantly trying to push this thing down over months or I mean, some people even years, right? Um, and then letting yourself really sit with those negative thoughts about the other person and demonize it so that you can get through it. It's not so that you can tell all your friends that your ex is an asshole and they did all this terrible stuff. It's so that you personally, in your own mental headspace, can mentally process through the unattaching from this person, right? When you break up with someone, there is an own part of your own identity that dies with that relationship. Part of your identity was I am the person who was with this person. And when that person is no longer in your life, then that piece of identity that you have attached to that relationship or that person and what you do together and all the, you know, the, the way you spend time together, that part of you has died. And that is a grieving process that needs to, it needs to be dealt with, right? So hopefully that was helpful, guys. Um, again, this is something that I really didn't plan on sharing, but I just, you know, the universe just really wanted me to share this because it just keeps getting me into these really hardcore conversations with people. And they're some of the most impactful conversations I've had in, in the last little while. So hopefully that was valuable to you guys. And I want to hear from you. Are you guys going through something similar? Like what are your experiences when it comes to difficult breakups and how, how did you deal with it? And what did you learn from it? I find this stuff really fascinating. Um, and hopefully it was helpful for you guys. So if you guys haven't already, please, subscribe to this podcast, uh, leave us a review. It's a fairly new podcast still. So every one of those reviews, I really appreciate it. And until next time, guys, take care. Thanks for joining us on the Danny Carlson podcast. For resources mentioned in this episode, visit dannycarlson.co.